Good afternoon. To begin with, we will hear two pieces by two composers, both born in the year 1685, Johann Sebastian Bach and Domenico Scarlatti. In these two works, we will hear two distinct compositional approaches, the high Baroque, more conservative Baroque of J.S. Bach and the forward-looking, clear singing style of Domenico Scarlatti. Thank you. 
Alex Smith just played for us the well-known Prode in C by Bach and Sonata in A, K208 by Domenico Scarlatti. Now we will hear Professor Robert Mangelati, accompanied baritone, accompanied by Eva Ferguson, piano, singing soliloquy from Carousel. Premiered in 1945, Carousel by Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein II is the second of several musicals they created together that changed the direction of musical theater in the 1940s and 50s. In fact, it was Richard Rodgers' personal favorite. Many say that it is the most operatic of all their shows. Billy Bigelow, the lead character and singer of Soliloquy, is a uniquely flawed character. One of the first anti-heroes in musical comedy, he routinely disparages people, uses crude language, and actually strikes his wife, Julie. This is very different from the usual musical comedy protagonists of the day. The song is over seven minutes long and is through composed, the music changing along with his developing story. The structure is more like an aria or art song than the typical verse and chorus from, uh, form prevalent in musicals of the time. Several opera singers, in fact, have recorded this composition. I wonder what he'll think of me. I guess he'll call me <laughs> the old man. I bet he'll think I can lick every fellow that his father. Yes, I can. I bet that he'll turn out to be the spitting image of his dad. But he'll have more common sense than his pudding-headed father ever had. I'll teach him to wrestle and dive through a wave when we go in the mornings for our swim. His mother can teach him the way to behave, but she won't make a sissy out of him. Not Bill, not my boy, not Bill. My boy Bill, I will see that he's named after me. I will. My boy Bill, he'll be tall and as tough as a tree. Will Bill, like a tree, he'll grow with his head held high and his feet planted firm on the ground. And you won't see nobody dare to try to pull him or boss him around. No pot belly baggy eyed bully will boss him around. And I don't give a damn what he does as long as he does what he likes. He can sit on his tail and work on a rail with a hammer of hammering spikes. He can ferry a boat on a river or pedal a pack on his back or work up and down the streets of a town with a whip and a horse and a hack. He can haul a cow along a canal, run a cow around a corral, or maybe bark for a carousel. <laughs> of course, it takes talent to do that well. 
He might be a champ of the heavyweights or a fella that sells you glue. <clears throat> a president of the United States, <laughs> that'd be all right too. Now he wouldn't be president unless he wanted to be. <laughs> Not Bill, my boy Bill, he'll be tall and as tough as a tree. Will Bill, like a tree, he'll grow with his head held high and his feet planted firm on the ground. And you won't see nobody dare to try to bowl him or boss him around. No fat bottom, flabby face, hot belly, baggy eyed bully will boss him around. And I'm damned if he'll marry his boss, his dirter, a skinny lipped virgin with blood like water, who give him a peck and call it a kiss and look in her eyes through a lorn yet. Hey, why am I taking on like this? My kid ain't even been born yet. I can see him when he's 17 or so and starting in to go with a girl. I can show him lots of pointers very sound on the way to get round any girl. I can see him. Hey, wait a minute. Could it be? What the heck? What if he is a girl? Bill. Oh, Bill. What, what would I do with her? I mean, what could I do for her? Bum with no money. You can have fun with a son, but you gotta be a father to a girl. A kid with ribbons in her hair, a kind of sweet and petite little tin type of a mother. What a pair! I could just see myself bragging about her. My little girl, pink and white, as peaches and cream is she. My little half again as bright as girls are meant to be. Dozens of boys pursue a few pink and white younger fellas of two or three but my little girl gets hungry every night and she comes home to me Gotta get ready before she comes. I gotta make certain that she won't be dragged up in slums with a lot of bums like me. She's gotta be sheltered and fed and dressed in the best that money can buy. I never knew how to get money, but I'll try. My God, I'll try. I'll go out and make it or steal. Or take it or die.
The Fantasy for Clarinet, Opus 87 by Malcolm Arnold, that Maria Tunison will play, is by the 20th century composer, Malcolm Arnold, English composer, knighted in 1993 for his service to music. His style is known for being tuneful and having lively rhythms. The Fantasy for Clarinet was written as part of a commission from the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra for five solo wind fantasies for the Birmingham International Wind Competition in 1966. The Clarinet Fantasy is a short technical piece that has a fiery character and is full of contrasts.
Professor Lisa Nelson, accompanied by Eva Ferguson again on the piano, will now present Lullaby and Rondo for viola and piano by the Bulgarian composer Vasil Lolov, who lived from 1913 to 1992. He was a violinist, teacher, and composer, and studied violin and composition at the Bulgarian State Academy of Music and Berlin Conservatory. He wrote two original viola works, this lullaby and rondo. Born in Yambol in the southeastern part of the country, near the border with Turkey, Lolov may have been influenced by the migration of the population between Turkey and neighboring countries, as well as the music of the Shop region of Bulgaria. He found inspiration in the folk tradition, and imitations of native instruments and melodic patterns permeate his music. Lullaby reflects the working life of the Bulgarian people, referring to an afternoon sleep when laborers were tired after a day of hard work in the fields. Bulgarian vocal ornamentation, turns and ornaments in the melody, and folk intonation are interwoven with features of late Romanticism. Rondo invokes the spirit of a Bulgarian folk dance, swirling melodies, modal harmonies, and effects that imitate imitate folk instruments. This effect, one effect, for example, is a solo ponticello playing close to the bridge for a raspy timbre.
Dr. Franklin Leray will next piano will next play three pieces from the second book of preludes by Claude Debussy, Feuille Morte, Bruyère, and Ondine. The second book of preludes, published in 1913, is commonly regarded as the essence of impressionism expressed in music. These works are Debussy's most forward-looking in terms of the scope of his compositional technique, pianistic color and expression, sound textures, and the masterful manipulation of motives. Forêt morte, dead leaves, and Briere, moors, are rich in their harmonic colorations. Both Debussy and fellow impressionist composer Maurice Ravel had composed music for solo piano with the title Ondine, inspired by the namesake water sprite who places a deadly curse on a mortal who had betrayed her love. While Ravel's more famous work, completed in 1908, tells of the sprite seducing a mortal, Debussy's depiction portrays her as a playful character splashing about in the water that she calls home. This piece, written with a tempo marking of scherzo to emphasize the whimsical nature of the piece, opens in an, an ethereal mood. It quickly turns mischievous with two key musical ideas, a scintillant figure that swirls about and a melody of repeated notes that evokes mystery, which reappears in the higher register and is subsequently heard in a more menacing, darker hue in the bass. A final splash marks the departure of the water sprite as she disappears into the mysterious depths of the water.
Professors William West, playing flute, Eva Ferguson, piano, will now present Acrostic Song by David Del Tredici. Pulitzer Prize winning composer David Del Tredici's final Alice is the fifth, fifth of six large works for soprano and orchestra based on Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland books. It was commissioned in honor of the United States Bicentennial and was premiered by soprano Barbara Hendricks and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra under Sir George Schulte in 1976. Acrostic Song is the lullaby-like concluding aria from Final Alice. The text is the seven-verse epilogue poem to Through the Looking Glass, the second of Lewis Carroll's Alice books. The poem is an acrostic. The initial letters of the line spell out Alice Pleasance Liddell, the name of the real-life Alice for whom Carroll wrote his stories. This arrangement by the composer for flute and piano was commissioned by flutist Carol Winsens.
To conclude today's faculty showcase, Professors Eva Ferguson and Franklin Loray will play four movements of Gabrielle Faré's Dolly Suite, Opus 56. This suite of pieces for piano duet is dedicated to Emma Bardach's cheerful daughter, Hélène, nicknamed Dolly. The six pieces that make up the suite reflect Dolly's development. The Berceuse was composed for Dolly's first birthday. The title of Miaou was initially Monsieur Aoul, Dolly's way of pronouncing Monsieur Raoul, her older brother Raoul. Le Jardin de Dolly shows his affinity for the use of counterpoint. And finally, Le Bas Espagnol was inspired by a bronze equestrian statue that Dolly loved. Like other French composers at that time, Faure had fascination with Spanish culture as seen in the exhilarating grand finale of the suite. Its momentum, rhythm, passion, fire, and the imitation of castanets in the opening motif add Spanish color to the music. 